Hello crafties, welcome to another Knitting Wednesday. My name is Infinity and today I am here with another Centro Knitting Machine tutorial. So this week what I want to do is show you guys how I do scarves. And for today's tutorial I will be using um, Lion Brand Mandala Yarn. It is one of my go-to yarns for this machine um, because I make long scars. If you don't know um, about those, you can check out my Etsy shop. They're up there. They're these super long, extra cool scarves that I turn out. I use the entire skein of mandala. Um, each mandala skein has 590 yards in it, which is perfect for long scarf making. I'm also in the progress of or process rather of making hat sets so that's also very handy with this as well so what I like to do with this machine is start off with a slip knot you can do that in any way you would like and I loop it over this white hook which should be in the up position now if you don't know how to work this machine um, at this point I do have several tutorials back on my channel which I will link and what we're gonna want to do Can I zoom in? What we're going to want to do is go about casting on. So like I said, I put my slip knot on this white hook. So technically that's around the front of the hook. So now I'm going to have my working yarn go behind, then in front, then behind, then in front. Until I come back to my white needle. And once my white needle is back in the up position, you guys can see that. What I'm going to do is make sure that that white hook catches my working yarn. And I'm going to crank that stitch and put my yarn through the little threader here. Let's zoom back out. Just like that. Now with this yarn, it's kind of thin as you can see. So what I do is I put it through two of the holes, depending on my t the tension that I desire, I put it through all three and wind like that. So now that I am cast on, of course the instructions with your machine, that come with your machine, say to crank slowly for the first three to four rows, but you can do that, especially if you're just starting out because you have the possibility to, or the, um, the potential to drop those stitches at the beginning and it's going to be a horrible mess at the end. All right, but just cranking it out slowly. I'm already on row three, just to show you how fast it goes. And there's my white hook. And then from this point, you can just pretty much crank it out. So I'm gonna start cranking out my rows.
at this point I am at row 55 of my project and depending on the fiber that I'm using or you know the project that I'm making at this point on my scarf I would actually start sewing in the bottom half and so you know you're gonna want to find where that end tail is there where you first cast on and you're going to want to thread a sewing needle or a yarn needle to your project now of course you might want to use a bigger eye than I do this is just what I have over in the studio today all right so like I said you're gonna to want to find where that tail is on your project and what I do is I start folding my project kind of in half here so that this corner matches up with the other corner and it's gonna take some fiddling and unrolling of the bottom of this project because as you may know by now or have noticed at this point all of your knitting projects will curl up on the ends when you're working with this machine and so there's nothing real fancy here I just do some real basic sewing stitches I'm not a um, seamstress or anything I, sh I don't really <laughs> know all the wonderful terminology that comes with sewing yet it's a work in progress but I tie a little not even a knot it's just a basic tie could come loose but that just secures uh, me where I want to sew and I start weaving in and out um, of my stitches both sides of it fairly close together so if you know you, whenever you flip it you don't have a hole or a gap between your stitches and this is really important especially if you're gonna sell your scarves that you make you don't want people to be able to put a finger between your stitches it's just not it doesn't look good <laughs> And I do this early on because later on there's going to be so much fabric down in this machine that I'm not going to want to um, have to go all the way down in there to find this other end to sew it together. And it also doesn't look that great if you're sewing it from the outside. So anytime you're sewing things like bags or pillowcases or scarves like this, you want to work um, inside out. And that's just something you learn over the um, over the years as you craft. You're just trying to make these stitches as straight as possible. Of course, there's going to be some inaccuracies when you're hand sewing, um, but thankfully, you know, as you stitch along, this part will be invisible more or less but like I said you want to make sure that your stitches are good and close together that they're nice and snug not too snug that you're cinching your project like that you don't want to do that but just make sure you can't wiggle your fingers in there all right and once you reach the end of your sewing row you can if you have enough yarn left over you can go back across there just to weave in between the stitches you just made um, just to ensure that you know there's no wiggle room in there like I said you want to make sure that no fingers can get through there and you might have saw that I was able to get my finger between one of those stitches and that bothers me so I'm gonna go back and weave this across there that also adds a little bit of extra security for your project as far as unraveling and all that crafter drama <laughs> that um, you may encounter later on over use I've never had a problem with my projects coming undone on me or other people, so yep. <laughs> I just keep doing the same thing consistently. And I'm going to go ahead and finish this and then I'll meet y'all back um, when I'm ready to start back cranking. Alright, 
And like I said, you want to make sure that you didn't cinch your project so it doesn't hurt to just kind of tug on it a little bit once you reach the other end of your project. And what I do is I go ahead and thread my needle and I start making another loop. And I actually go about knotting that loop um, just to close off that sewing row. If you've been following me for a long time, you know that I get paranoid about my stitches coming apart. Like I said, I've never had the issue, but I want to make sure that I never have the issue. So once I tie that knot, I also use just a little dab of Fray Check. It's basically a liquid stitch um, seam holder type thing. Many crafters use it in their crochet and knitting projects just to secure that closure right there. All right, now I am ready to just go ahead and leave that in there. I am ready to start back cranking. I am going to crank out the entirety of my skein. Now, um, whatever yarn you're using, you know, that'll basically be the determining factor in how many rows you crank out. I cranked a hat out of this skein before I started recording this video, so I'm sure I'm going to have like 300 rows. <laughs> so I'm going to go ahead and crank out my project, and I'll meet you guys back when I am ready to cast off. Okay guys, so I have come essentially to the end of my skein so I am ready to cast off now when you're casting off once you get that white needle in the up position and you determine that you're at your last row what you're going to do is hold your yarn up in a vertical you're working yarn up in a vertical position and you're going to crank a full row I already did that because I just got lost in the process so once you get to that point what I like to do is my white needle is right here this is where the end of my working yarn is out of this white needle and I've stopped a couple needles before that because I personally like to start casting off like all of these stitches are technically cast off and they just need to be threaded through did I put up three fingers cast off okay and um, so what you want to do is just insert your needle whichever sewing needle today I'm using a regular darning needle you can use the plastic needle that come with the machine whichever you prefer I prefer this because I don't have to re-thread the needle afterwards. But anyway, um, what you want to do is just start kind of whipping those stitches off. And a handy tip that I always have when I am casting off stitches is to put your finger over the next stitch. Because some it can be kind of easy to drop stitches um, when you're casting off. So you're going to want to kind of hold it down just to make sure. It doesn't happen often, but... If you can at all avoid having to fix those knit stitches, I would recommend doing so by just placing your finger over that next stitch. Especially when you get ready to kind of tug and pull your yarn through those cast off stitches, you're going to want to make sure that next one over is secure. So I'm just going to keep going around my machine casting off my project and I'll meet you guys back when I get done. If you are unfamiliar with the casting off process, I do have a separate video that specifically focuses on casting off projects on the Centro knitting machine with the 48 needles. And I'll probably be putting it up in the corner somewhere. Or at the end of this video, I don't know. Okay guys, so this is what it looks like cast off. Um, as you can see, my little ends curled up. They do that, don't freak out. This is the other end of that scarf. Like I said earlier in the video and showed you guys, I went in twice to make sure that my fingers couldn't get in there and it's nice and secure and neat looking and even. So that's what you want when you're making these scarves. And I love the colors. I just love the colors in these mandalas. But anyway, I'm going to show you guys how I personally close off this other end because it can be tricky. And naturally, you don't just want to fold it in half and get to weaving because it looks kind of raggedy on the end. I did that on a scarf of mine that's somewhere that I don't have it right now. <laughs> but it's one of my personal scarves that I kept because I messed it up. So what I do is I go ahead and... Um, I put my arm all the way in this thing, all the way down, so that I can grab this other end from the inside. And I want to pull my whole project and turn it inside out. Alright, and 
find my tail. Now that it's inside out, like I did on the other end, I want to start folding it in half. And I'm just going to start sewing back and forth on it. Now, you don't want to get all the way to the end. So just sew it up to where maybe you have like an inch or so left to sew up. And then I'll show you how to finish this off. Tying my little knot. And then. And if you have a long enough needle, you can easily kind of makeshift cast on these stitches while you're sewing, and that'll also help you to keep your stitches closer together. And the one thing to be thankful for with this type of project is that your stitches will be on the inside of the project, like I said. So if you do accidentally get a crooked stitch, it won't be out there for the whole world to see. But you do want to practice good craft and make sure that your stitches are all pretty much straight in a row, especially if you're hand sewing. Again, don't pull it too tight so you don't cinch it together like a hat. All right, now I have about a one inch opening, eyeballing it, of course. And if you do have any little quote unquote peepholes in here, um, you can go back across here and sew it together after we do this step. So I'm just gonna drop my working needle, literally. <laughs> and I'm going to insert my fingers into this little opening and what I'm going to do is start kind of rolling up my project over my hand. Uh, make sure you can work with those fingers that you put into this opening so that you can get all the way to the bottom. And what we're going to be doing is we're going to be grabbing the other end. Can I zoom out? We're going to be grabbing the other end from the inside. And we're going to be pulling it through that opening. So I'm all the way down here. I can grab with two or yeah, two of my fingers. And I'm just going to start gently pulling it so that the right side is on the outside. And at this point, you can make sure that your corners are good. This is how my corners look, so this is why it's like that. It isn't bad. If you're making a project that has sharper corners, just make sure you kind of poke those out. Um, before you sew your whole project closed but you just want to pull and pull and pull until your project inverts itself and then like I said on this end too you want to make sure that you are pushing out those corners making sure they're good and even now my stitches on this side look pretty good there's like one right here so I'm gonna go back across it with my remaining yarn and to find my needle <laughs> that ended up on the inside Oops. Okay, and now what I'm going to do is just go ahead and I'm going to take these ends 
that are curling on the outside and I'm going to roll them so that they are inside. And I like that. And I'm going to fold that and hold it together, just like that. Okay. Now I'm going to kind of wiggle my needle because, like, it's on the. It's weird to explain. It's kind of on the inside of my stitches right here. So, what I want to do is weave it so that it's coming to the outside of my project like this. I'm just going to pull it out. And I'm just going to do this. Now if you wanted to, you could fold this project just normally, I think, and sew that together and then tuck it in there and then go back across the top and weave it together but it's just personal preference I do mine this way because at the end you really can't tell which way you went about it and it's really easy to get these stitches ultra close together which is what you want so you don't have to deal with the little finger holes as I call them across here like where we flipped this and inverted it right here. There's one right there. So I'm just going to go back across it. You don't have to tie it at the end. Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. It just depends on how I'm needing to work this project. So I'm just going to go back across my stitches. And I'm almost there. All right, and again. Don't want to make you want to make sure this is what I mean about cinching. You want to make sure that you're not doing that. So you can just kind of pull that apart. And I'm going to do one more little finishing knot towards the end here. Just like right on the side where it won't be noticeable. I'm gonna loop my needle through that loop I just made. And I'm just going to stick my needle in there. I know this is a lot of weaving in, um, but it's well worth it when your projects don't come apart. Alright, and then I use just a dab of fray check like right here where I tied the knot. And then right here where this string is coming out. And then I can snip my end off of here. And I am done. So now I'm going to show you guys what my finished product looks like. So I'll be right back. Alright guys, so this is what my finished product looks like. Um, it's a pretty standard length scarf. I am, I was about to say six foot, I am five six. So <laughs> this is about how it hangs, just like right above the waist here. And I did make a hat with, like I said, the beginning part of that skein. And I do like the colorway. But realizing, like, I risked something I realized when I made the hat. I'm like, it's super, super thin. So I'm like, this is for people who get, ex like, extremely hot in the wintertime. Um, not me, not quite. Like, I do get warm, but it's not, like, that warm. It's very thin. Because the mandalas are a three-weight yarn. 
but nevertheless I am overall happy with the outcome of this project and it will be up in my Etsy store what when this fall <laughs> so I'm still determining a release date for that these are ready to be tagged and packaged and stored so I'm gonna go do that when I hop off camera here I hope today's tutorial was helpful for you guys if so don't forget to leave me a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell so you never miss out on awesome weekly content like this I post knitting tutorials every Wednesday at 9 30 a.m. CST I have been doing this knit um, Central Knitting Machine series for several weeks now. So I don't know when I'm going back to regular knitting, probably very soon because there's only so much I can think about. <laughs> like, there's only so many projects that I can think of to do on this machine. So regular knitting is probably coming back really soon. And until next time guys, happy making!